All right. I've got a few web pages open here. Hopefully, the software I'm using to record this will cooperate. Uh, it's telling me there might be some problems with trying to record two audio sources, uh, but I wanted to be able to record my voice for narration and also uh, some of what was said on a small clip from uh, a recorded live stream. It was a live stream, now it's recorded, on Aaron Ra's uh, YouTube page, and I'll play that now. My, my observations, because I'm, I'm not, not uh, all over the world. world. I'm, I'm on the ground. ground. I'm, I'm looking, looking around me and I have questions. questions. Could, did you, did you tend to more fit a flat Earth model than it does a heliocentric, heliocentric model. model. That's, That's basically what this is. Okay, but, but you understand. You understand you, oh, I'm sorry, sorry Andrew, just one moment. You understand, you understand that, that, that to make, make a 14-hour 14 14 hour flight from Sydney to Johannesburg, which people do six days a week, is, is only possible on a globe. It is, is not, not possible to do what people do every day on, on the flat earth. Okay. okay. All right. I'm going to pause that there, and I may or may not go back to it. But um, here's the flat earth model uh, that Aaron was showing this person the other day um, when he did the uh, first part of this. It, he actually uh, live streamed two hours. And then this is a separate live stream that, that went over three hours. But um, he has showed him this map. And then uh, the guy who's uh, promoting the Flat Earth, I, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, Ali Gensho, I think, something like that. At any rate, um, he said there was something wrong with this map because here in the center, uh, there's, there's no continent there. Um, that's, of course, ocean. Um, used to be ice-covered, global warming and all, you know. any rate, um, and also something else didn't seem to look right to him, and he didn't seem to be sure what it was. I think what it is is the shape of Australia up here. Uh, that, that, that might be throwing him off a little. Uh, most people living in the Northern Hemisphere don't pay a heck of a lot of attention to the shape of Australia, uh, but it's still at least noticed subconsciously. Now, Sydney, Australia would be right about here where I'm pointing my mouse cursor. Way down here uh, in, in Africa is uh, somewhere around this area is, is uh, Perth and Johannesburg. Now, if I go um, to this web page, uh, there is a flight path from Johannesburg to Sydney. Now, notice it's slightly curved. It's showing a direct path, but on this map, it's showing it slightly curved. Well, the reason why that's slightly curved is because the Earth is a globe, but I'm going to try to demonstrate that. Now, if I go back to this... Uh, <clears throat> if I go back to this model, this, this flat Earth model... You can see if I made a straight line uh, from up here at Sydney to down here at Johannesburg, I'd be crossing quite a bit of land on the way and actually getting farther away from the southern edge of this map, which would be the equivalent of the South Pole, um, except that it's it's not in one spot. It's spread all around the thing. But, you, but notice, though, my straight line, as here when I start, I'm very close to that southern edge. And here where I end, I'm very close to that southern edge. We're going almost the farthest distance you can go in a straight line on this map to get from point A to point B. And we're crossing a whole lot of land in the process. But here on this map, we start at point A. And we go closer to the south, clo closer to the the what would be the south line on this map. It's a flat map, so a flat map with the uh, the north being a line way at the top off of what's shown here, and uh, and and the the south south pole being a line at the bottom. Again, these are distortions turning a globe into something flat. Uh, but now I want I want you to take a look at the scale of this. Look look at the the size of Australia on this map and the shape of Australia on this map. Now I'm going to go over here and you can see it's kind of hard to compare the size because the shape is all off. 
But if I go to this map and I bring up Australia, you can see there I've pretty close to match the size of Australia on this map here and on this map here. And to show you that this other map is scaled pretty close to the same, which I've done the best I can to, to scale it uh, pretty close, I'm going to bring up uh, North America over here and then rotate that down on this map to be in about the center of the screen. And on this one, I'm going to rotate it to, uh, what was it, about that angle, I think? Let me take another look. Oh, no, I've got it upside down. Okay, so rotate that around this way, approximately like that. Let me take another look. And there, if you, if you look at this North America here with Canada, the United States, Mexico, and there's Central America down there, and you, you look at that the shape of that map and Greenland up here, and then compare that with what you see over here on the globe, that's pretty close to the same. So I've done the best I can there uh, to match those up. But now if I go back over here on this map to Africa and Australia, and I bring those onto the globe, and then I roll this one up until you can see um, <clears throat> pretty much a straight line here between... Uh, Sydney and Johannesburg, you can see that that straight line actually does start out farther from the South Pole, which is down here, than it ends up as it goes across in a straight line. Over here, halfway between the two is closer to the South Pole. So it does actually explain this curved path, which goes closer to the South Pole. Now... I got too many things running, so the page apparently reset itself when I scrolled there. And hopefully, like I said, hopefully the recording will work. But uh, there again, there's my um, Africa, uh, Johannesburg, Africa, and Sydney, Australia. And if I bring them up here to the middle of the screen, roughly, I'm going to try to balance that a little bit here. There we go. Um, Roughly the middle, and here, of course, this I can, I could turn this around, and if you look at it this way, uh, again from Sid Sydney to uh, Johannesburg, same straight line path, still getting closer to the South Pole, even though the South Pole is now up on this map. Doesn't make a difference what orientation you put it in. The, clo the, the, the closest thing to a straight line you can get on the surface of the globe is going to be a curved line on on either of the two flat maps that we're looking at on this one or on this one but notice the difference though that here this is almost well here if i do it this way it's 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 a much shorter line because we're talking about um if you for example go back to uh, North America. Notice this is this is from here to here. Um, it, the, this outer line being basically the equator that we're looking at. So we're going uh, about half, uh, almost the distance from the equator to the equator. But if I go back on this map, the, the equator would be roughly around here. So we're talking like from here to here. That's half half the longest distance you can travel on this thing from Sydney to Johannesburg. Literally, this map is like roughly doubling the distance. Now, that's an estimate. It's a visual estimate. I didn't do the math on it. Somebody else can if they want. I've already made this longer than I wanted to. I wanted to keep it short. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, quit this and uh, upload it, and it'll be available for anybody that wants to uh, look at it with a little more scrutiny or... Uh, comment on it, ask me any questions about it. I may or may not see the questions. Uh, I ha haven't gotten myself real good at the uh, uh, YouTube comment things, but hopefully if I get a lot of comments, maybe somebody can help me to get better at it. 
So at any rate, thank you very much.